Okay, well, for people who are joining this live stream, this is a software architecture internal design meeting about a slightly complicated topic, which has to do with the way that uh, entities, that custom entities are represented in Wolfram language and in external databases connected to Wolfram language. So uh, let's launch. Okay, so let me try to understand the, the context of all of this. So what we have right now, um, we have uh, um, entities that are, let me see, I just messed up something here. Um, the, um, um, Uh, we, we have entities that are associated with um, uh, our built-in entities, like, for instance, something like this, right? So what is the relationship between, and we also have the notion of an external reference. What is the relationship of what we're talking about here to built-in entities? Hello, anybody oh, yeah. hear me? So uh, one of the things that we want to do for uh, the, the SQL integration is uh, that uh, we want to introduce other primitives to perform more powerful operations on on, on, the, on external databases. And I think those operations should also uh, work on internal entities. So I, okay. I guess that's but, what so, we're talking so, here is fully general. Um, okay, but let me try to understand um, I don't understand. Let's go through the introduction here. What What is this about? And, and what, okay. where have we got to the last time we were talking about this? Okay, so um, this is, so if you look at that New York City entity, the second yep. argument, so the first argument tells you what the type of the entity is. Yep. The second argument will tell you it's it's a unique identifier. Yep, 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 yep. So the, the question is, how do we digest uh, unique identifiers that come from the outside? Which are basically UUIDs. It depends. It depends. Because well, what does it depend on? I mean, so so we've got the notion of an external reference. Is is Alan here? I assume Alan is here. Yes. No, he is not. But I can grab him. Yeah, I would think so. If that's what we're talking about, we'll do. Well, the external reference is is used for like for entities that are aligned with other systems for yeah that's correct yeah. okay so walk me through what 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 is yeah. the question here so, what so are we okay so uh, okay so different database administrator might have made different choices on how to index these things and so it might be uids might be strings might be successive integers it might they might be dates as well because okay but so each one is associated with some particular database schema is that true so whatever scheme is being used is associated with some database schema, is that true? Yeah. Okay. And, and how and, are we uh, representing the database schema? How are we identifying the database schema? Uh, the database schema is represented. So if you if you got the other file that I sent you via email, that's that bookbees.sqlite 3 When we do, if you do just database inspect in isolation on that file. What am I supposed to do with that file? Okay, uh, put it in the same folder as this notebook with, let's call canonical name. Is this folder is this folder been put somewhere or is this folder just sort of floating freely? It's not been put somewhere. I'll put it somewhere. Um, can somebody remind me what uh, folder we've got stuff about this in? It was called databases. Okay. Is there somebody from project management here? Dominic. Who's here yeah, from I'm project here. management? I'm well. Dominic. Okay. Okay. So you want me to put that, put the SQLite file in the same directory as I'm putting this notebook. Correct. Okay. It would have been great if this had already been set up. So we can I, I assume you you were running a prototype build. 
Not right now, I'm not, but I can if you want me to. What yeah, should yes, I be running? Yes. Uh, okay. The most recent you get. Okay, it's one that ends in three sevens. Is that the correct one? Um, let me check. Whatever this build is, it doesn't allow that the, the uh, welcome screen is broken here. Does it allow cloud connection, which I'm probably going to need? Well, not for this. But... Okay. All right, so I, I will open this notebook in there. Okay. All right. Now what do I do? Now do I run this first yes. line? Hello? Say no. Well, that should have probably been no. I'm sorry? Well, never mind. It's going to evaluate another thing further down. Okay. And for reference, Alan has joined. Great. Oh, by the way, uh, we haven't fully optimized the connection to Jiton yet, so this is going to take like 10 seconds. In the meantime, I can explain to you the, the basic idea of what, what we want to discuss today. Which okay. Is, okay, so basically, the, the main problem is that um, there, you don't always have a guarantee that there is only one column that, com that composes the, the primary key. Primary key might be multiple columns. And so okay. the question is, uh, what scheme do we want to use uh, to construct a canonical name out of the primary keys, whether it's a positional? Okay, but look, in the end, what we're trying to do, let, let's zoom out for a minute. Yes. In the end, what we're trying to do is we're trying to map an external database into an entity store. Yes. And in an entity store, there are entities. And the question is, within a particular database schema, you say there are, there are primary keys that... Uh, are in that database schema, and the question is, how do they wind up as as reasonable as possible entities in an entity store? Is that correct? Yes. So, okay. okay. So you were asking. So this has finished evaluating. So now, if you just out of that first uh, gray cell, copy out database inspect, then you can see the our representation of the schema, which is um, yeah, without okay. the entity wrappers around it. So okay. All right, so this is, okay, so this is a schema. It says it's an SQLite database in this particular case, and it has 10 tables. Okay. You can open the flippers. What is the singular of the word schema? Is schema the singular? A schemata must it's be It's a singular. Plural. Yeah, okay, and schemata is the plural, I suppose. Yes. Okay, cool. Um, and... Uh, If you look at uh, these tables, like for instance, editor, you can see that there is one field there, which is a primary key. Okay, let's take a look. Okay, so this is quite yeah, nice. Keep Simple. opening uh, editor and, and, and see what's inside. Um, um, okay, let's take a look. Okay, can I get this out in some structure that I can actually compute with? Yes, certainly. This is just the box. So how do I, how do I get it out in a, a structure I can compute with? I mean, it has. It, I don't know if how much we implemented yet of that, but it has properties. So I think. Okay, so this SQL database object has properties, which include some uh, presumably data set hierarchical representation of the schema. Is that true? Yeah. I mean, internally, yes. Internally, yes. We can make it return a, a data. Set. We should do that. This is nice yeah. and. Um, Okay, even if var char forty is rather grotesque. Yeah, that's okay. that. Well, they okay. Don't All right, so fine. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So, so that's so now you have the entries uh, registered uh, as well because basically from this data SQL database object by wrapping entity store around it we construct a bare bone entity store which has no opinion. Okay. So this so this entity store will go into this database schema and try to construct um, sensible entities to represent the primary keys in this database. Is that correct? Yes. 
Okay, an entity register registers those entities within the session so that I can just refer to them by their name. So how, how would I do discovery of you know, some entities here? So for example, I wanna know about editors that exist here. Can I just do entity list? And then what do I do? Editor. Quotes editor like that? Yes. Okay. And so what it did was it took something I might very well not want in the entity registration or the entity store creation. And it now has an entity type called editor that comes from the key here. And those are the names of those. So if I look at the um, uh, input form of that, what I should see is entity of editor comma, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Exactly. And those those things there were just the actual keys that appeared in this database. Is that correct? Yeah, those correspond to the primary keys, the style ID. Okay. In this case, since nobody has told us what the label would be, well, those, ed those editors are, remain kind of nameless. They have these ugly strings. Okay, so in the construction of an entity store, just so we're clear, the um, there are uh, you can specify four entities, um, both their canonical name and a common name or label is that correct yes in this case the common name is not defined well so let's uh, let's just see what common name actually does so if i say this and i say common name of that what does it do Ugh, that's pretty horrifying is that really the right thing uh, i don't know this is what the and the the entity framework currently does it's out out of our I mean, you haven't defined label, so there's nothing really we can do. I don't think this is the right thing to do for that. Well, uh, is I mean, Michael here? Can he comment on this? I think it's the right thing. Why? Because it this is what it is. Like there doesn't exist something outside of the name properties that is common name, kind of that is a higher order object. Okay. I mean the only thing would be a kind of do something sensible rather than having this kind of grotesque thing hanging around throughout your, um, I mean, it, it might help if we formatted a missing better. That would probably make it less grotesque. Another reason to do that. It also indicates what's the, what is the only possible way to fix the problem. Well, fair enough. Okay, all right. So let, let's come back to what you were talking about before. So Okay, so now the question is, uh, suppose now, well, this is a simple table that has only one primary key, so it's fairly obvious how, what to do. But first of all, uh, tables can have multiple primary keys, but also as soon as you start doing complex operations on them, then you might end up with several primary keys or uh, primary keys that are not entirely obvious. So how do we, how do we, specify them. And I think that there are two possible schemes. And the one that is currently implemented is kind of a mixture of the two, which I'm not particularly a fan of. And the two are, one is positional hierarchical, which means that you basically keep constructing nested lists. And then it's just the position in the list that tells you what, what is the property that it corresponds to. And the, one, the other one is named, that you construct an entity ID wrapper and then in that entity ID wrapper, you have an association of property goes to value. Okay, sorry. Um, go ahead. So, go, go, I'm sorry, you have to repeat that. So um, what I was saying is that uh, when you start constructing more complex queries, the primary keys will also change. Um, and so there are two possible schemas in which to start constructing more complex primary keys out of uh, the, the existing query. So, uh, well, for basic type, there is not much of a question because it's it's flat. But okay, so just just to give me some sense, what, okay, what are we trying to achieve here? So we've got. Did we we discussed this before, didn't we? A little bit. All right. So th your point is that I, I don't understand. I mean, the primary key can have multiple uh, columns. There can be multiple columns that represent the primary key. Yes. So ultimately, the entity has to have um, has to be labeled not just by a single entry from a single column, but okay, 
but this is one where you're using named things from named columns. This is something where you're just making a list of the things from those columns. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay. So this would be analogous to the New York, New York, United States type type deal, just having them in a list. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay. Well, there's a caveat with New York, which is that cities and administrative divisions can have lists that are different lengths, and this can't really happen here. But fine. That's okay. Detail. Okay. So, so now, now the question is, what happens when you start doing operations on these? How do the primary keys transform? That's a really interesting question. Well, I don't understand. Why would they transform at all? I mean, an entity is an entity with well, some canonical name. Well, let's go through the... Well, one very basic example. If you scroll all the way down to entity aggregate by, you will see a couple of examples. Aggregate by, it was before. Before aggregate. Okay. Okay, so... Well, the first example, the first two examples uh, you can evaluate. Well, the, okay, the second so one. Let's you can take a look at this one here. Okay, so I'm trying to understand this one. So entity value, so entity aggregate by. What is so title? Two? Title are called title in this database, but they're books really. So and okay. they have a type, and those types okay. can be things like, uh, let's say. Okay, so th that's fine. So the the types there, and it's aggregating by those types. But what's this price per type third element? So that's that's uh, uh, you're adding a value. So in this case, basically, you're you're summing all the you're taking all the business books and summing the prices. I understand, but but why isn't entity aggregate by the aggregation? It's like is there an entity group by? No, not not. I mean, we didn't call it group by because it doesn't really have the same order of arguments as group by. Well, why not? Uh, because in group by, you can get out. A hierarchical structure here you really can't and also the the um so in group by you can just stop at the first two arguments and and you don't need to aggregate the things if you do that with sql you get nothing out okay well you just get the type <laughs> so it, there is no implicit aggregation that you can do because because sql only support first normal form and so only no, you can't put lists. You need to sum or to pick the average, stuff like that. Okay, but but let's let's go back in here for a minute. So, what is the analog for a data set, for example, of aggregate by? Uh, you can do it with group by. It's more it's, like it's group more by. Consistent. You basically, okay. it's like group by, where you will provide another function that does something with the result of the grouping. And that function would introduce this. Namely, field. this function red, the reduction function. Is that correct? Is yeah, that but yeah, you're you're also you'll also have to append it to the original association so that it stays a list of associations. Well, wait, 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 wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. I'm trying to understand what is the relationship between entity aggregate by and group by. So if I understand it, group by here has let's take a look. I mean, so in this case, if I say group by for this list. Um, let's try this, okay? Group by for that list with first as the operator, it is grouping these elements by ones that, in this case, have first element A, first element B. Okay, now if I were to say, at the end here, if I were to say reduction, uh, the reduction function should be length, then that's what I would get, right? Yeah, more or less. Only the only difference is that in our case, you have to start from a list of associations and you have to end with a list of associations. So you you're not allowed to do all the operations you can do with group by. Like you cannot do multiple hierarchical groupings. It always ends up flattened out. Well, let me understand what flattened out means here. So, in this particular case, if I were to take this and I were to ignore this piece, yeah, right, remove it, yeah. Now, what, what happens if I just say entity aggregate by here? Nothing, because it's okay. it works like entity class represents the thing. So in okay. this case, so I have to say entity have, value. Yes, but in this case, I, I'm not sure. Probably you want to put like a empty list as the third argument because I'm not sure this is going to work. Uh, but what this does is basically you get, uh, yeah, it doesn't work. Okay. Well, so, uh, so what should I be doing here? No, no, but it's like not supported. <laughs> so, uh, but let's say uh, in the, this is the correct thing. So here, you would, the result would be a table that has only one column and that's type. 
because there's no implicit aggregation. Okay, so if I just do this. No, that, that won't work either. Why not? Uh, uh, Why not? To, uh, to, I mean, first of all, uh, you, you would, you're trying to do something that is like you're going to shadow type if you do that. Secondly, you need an entity function there because generic Wolfram language code cannot run on the database. Well, we should certainly support things like identity. Yeah, maybe. I, uh, well, identity here, you can't support identity because identity is uh, not aggregating at all. Okay. So, you can well, so why don't I just say here, if I just say list, right? Yeah, that won't work either because it's not going to be in first normal form anymore. But I don't understand. What, what is, okay, this is kind of a mess. Okay, I don't even understand how this works. What is passed here? What is the X that's passed into this? X is, okay, so first you aggregate. So you get a bunch of entities that have, uh, that, ha that are the types. So business, red, uh, yeah, mod cook, popular comp, and so on. And then you can go back to the original table and say for those things that I grouped, I, I also want to take the total of what was the price column. Okay, but what is X here? X is one entity that's gonna be uh, no, indexed. No, it's, no, it's not. It's no, it's not, right, you're right. It's the, yeah, it's actually the entity class of the, yeah, no. it's the entity class of the entities of type type that have type business. So, you, you could okay, write but that's because of the aggregation. That's because it's aggregated by type. No, no, no. Yeah. That, yes, right. that's because it's aggregated yeah, by type. Exactly. But the so thing that's then that returned that here. Class, you could write it as entity class type, sorry, title, comma, type goes to business. And that's the thing that is passed there. Okay. Someone from the live stream is asking is, is entity aggregate by equivalent to with roll up in SQL? No, it's equivalent to group by in SQL. Okay. Um, okay. And so, the what's that? And the select. Not, it's not got a select thing. first and then it's got a group by. Is that right? Yes. An SQL select, not a Wolfram language. What? Uh, an SQL select, not a Wolfram language select. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, I'm still not really understanding this very well. Um, but I want to come back. Uh, so, but you see what I wanted, the point I was gonna, if you, instead of doing entity value, now you do entity list of this, then you will see that now these are indexed by the type, not by the split last. Oh, what are you doing here? So I, I remove that type specification yeah. there. So now these that. guys are indexed by, oh, that. What on earth is No, this? no, no, yeah, because you modified the example. You see you're doing some shadowing. Call that again, price per type. Price per type. No, okay. Type. What, what do you mean by shadowing? Uh, is that you called the the aggregator the same as the annotation, and so they. That doesn't have... seem to help me. What is that doing? Okay. So now, if you look at these, the second argument of entity here is entity ID type goes to business. Entity ID type goes to uh, mod cook, popular comp, and so on and so forth. Wait a second. So, so this. This is an entity. Okay, that's an entity. Where's the entity type? The entity type is at the beginning here. It's the yeah, it's, entity it's not, aggregate. Yeah, by. because there is no string type. That's uh, on the fly type, remember? Yeah. So, like uh, another example, maybe that's clear because it's made with built in entities, but it won't work, is below, if you look at the uh, under named examples, there's that with country and continent. So you're 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 grouping the the countries by continent, and then computing the mean population of the European countries. And so in this case, the entity ID is Europe. Someone from the live stream is asking a question that I also uh, want to know the answer to, which is why isn't there an aggregate by for data set? Uh, well, I think that. Data set as group by, which is strictly more powerful, but yeah, I mean, we should do so, aggregate by for data set as well. So the thing is, Stephen, that we have a requirement that whatever we uh, end up with is always a, sort of a flat table. While for data set, they deal with things differently. They construct hierarchical 
uh, you know, hierarchical structures where aggregators can be on a different, like deeper level of that structure than we have. So this is a slightly different semantics. Right. I, I hate to make a comment about something this trivial, but is it really right to have lowercase e for this Pokemon thing? I it's surely a bug. It's a bug. Okay, great. Yep. The, um. Okay. So, but you see, in this case, we're construct. We're really constructing new entities that didn't really exist before. And okay, but let's let's things. go back up to the top here. So, the question that you're asking is. You're, you're trying to make an entity by aggregation. Is that right? You're trying to make a kind of yeah. pop-up entity by aggregation. Yes. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So then the question is, what is the name of that entity? Yes. Okay. Or rather, and, the index, yeah, the canonical name. Really, the, how do you index into that virtual table? Right. Well, and, and perhaps in the world of the future, how would you use natural language to represent, to ask for that entity? Mm -hmm. Okay. So clearly, the symbolic representation, I mean, the code of how you got to that entity has to be part of its, quotes, name. Yeah, and the first right. argument. Right. So, so this stuff here, I don't understand. The, the thing you're describing here is, what, what is this stuff? This is the base things that come straight this is, from the Yeah, database. these are the things that come from the built-in tables in the database. Okay, before you start creating... Uh, before you start doing operations on them to combine things and aggregate things and so on. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Yeah. Okay. So in this database that you've got up here, these 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 IDs just came from whoever created this database, correct? Yes. Okay. And, and this uh, column name came from there. Okay. So... That's I, table name. Editor is table name. Table okay. name. Okay. What... What's what's then the column? Well, not, so far none. Like editor I see. Okay, okay, okay fine. I get it. Yeah, request to them. I get it. Do you really think it's right, even when you've registered the? So in this case, you've registered the database. The, I'm sorry, you've registered the entity store, and that allows you to use a naked string like this. What happens if there's a collision between these things when you do an entity register, Michael? Uh, I don't know right now. I, I think that it's by I design. Think it's like, What's that? I, I think the last one wins. But but not complete. I think that what you can, I think that when we talked about this first, one of the ideas was that you can register a country entity store if you want to say, like, I don't know, like, let's say that the built-in entities doesn't, don't have. I see. You have some crazy idea where, where that, you're going to be able to. add another country that is not there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. You, you, yeah. You're going to claim that. And, and this could be a very bizarre decision, that if you have two entity stores, A and B, and they both have entities that are countries, that essentially you can have, uh, you know, when you say entity of country, you'll get the stuff from the entity store that corresponds to the one that actually contains the country with that canonical name. Is that correct? Yeah, that, that might be a nightmare in, in terms of performance, but yeah. <laughs> well, it might be a, a nightmare in terms of not knowing what's going to overwrite what, because, you know, when you put in yeah. uh, exactly. database B, you know, it's going to randomly overwrite a bunch of, of the entities so, in database so, A. So, Stephen, that's, that's not the way to go. The way to go is to use some kind of prefixing that would indicate in case of collisions and disambiguate and tell, like something like fully qualified names, you know? Yeah, yeah, I understand. But, 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 but I think, I mean, I, I still think that it might be useful like to say to have maybe a more explicit construct to say please augment built-in entities with uh, some temporary entities like because i found or, or some temporary property because maybe yeah but look the, the the key thing here is entity register is operating kind of a hack i mean what it's trying to do which is good is it's trying to reproduce you know if i say country you know whatever it is italy or something then that um, the canonical form of that is just entity like that, right? And it, it's good to be able to let users create entities that are as simple as that, I think. However, when you bring in some random unwashed database from the outside or seven such databases, the fact that their random table names happen to show up here seems wrong to me. Yeah, but that's, the, so we have two places where you can fix that. One is directly in the SQL database object that already currently supports aliasing for those. 
So like you can do database inspect and then go modify the SQL object to, to fix. Okay. Databases. And the other place is the empty store because in the empty store, you have another level of indirection where you can say, well, this unwashed, uncouth uh, database administrator used lowercase names and I don't like them. So you can like make all the type names. Remind me how that works. Chemistry. So where is the, where is the specification of okay, type names? So right now, like right now, it's not there documented because there's no there's no outside data but what we what we were planning to do and i don't know if we've implemented it yet is to have something that says like basically so when you define an entity type the key is the name of the type and then you can say but point to this table on the database so it's going to be something like there's going to be a key inside that says database table name okay so so, so in here it. entity store um so inside the data, Steven, inside the data on the type level, we'll have a field that will be called something like, uh, you know, database table in our case. Uh, but maybe we wanted also somehow a general thing to alias, uh, to disambiguate, which would say rename this or use a different name for this type. Yeah, I, I understand. I understand. So that, but, um, boy, I, I want to comment for folks on the live stream that this is this is a much more technical meeting than I thought this was going to be. So we're we're dived pretty deep into uh, some highly technical things. There's a question here about uh, something completely different. We're taking it. We're going to take a micro break here. It's a question about bioinformatics formats. Wow, that's that's really different. Um, and uh, most of those do not return. Most of those return very simple things like strings and so on. I don't know these formats that are being specified here. We happen to have a, a new initiative in bioinformatics stuff. We can pass that on to the folks who are working on that. I've never heard of those particular um, uh, uh, types. I'm actually curious whether they return database-like things or whether they are like FASTA, for example, and returning basically strings. Well, um, well, I'm sure that, I mean, the person who takes care of the bioinformatics stuff is also a database expert, so. That is, happens to be true, yes. Yeah. Um, all right, so hopefully somebody can pass this on to him. Uh, okay, another point being made here. Data set can work on hierarchical tables. Flatten tables. The flattened 2D tables are important. Please think about having aggregate by, in addition to group by, irrespective of entities. I, I would actually like to understand that remark, okay? So why don't you walk me through what the difference is between aggregate by and group by for a data set? You, you were starting okay, okay. to with that. Yeah. Okay, so, so well, let's, take, actually, let's take an I, example. Uh, Steven, I think that somewhere in that database folder, you have something that is called like a, something with a sock in the name. Okay. So, so well, maybe let's you take, where do I what do I have here? I thought because, I had a because nice the, I have an implementation of, of aggregate by that works on this of a sort. Okay. Well let, let's take an example here. Um just an example data set. Okay, of planets. Now perhaps you can tell me if I do group by on this on this data set, what do I get? Uh, so there's not much to group on here, but well, let's do something. Let's let's flatten out. Uh, let's do okay. One way to group this is by first flattening out the moons by planet. Okay, but so l let's in this aggregate by. Wouldn't I? I mean, like for example, if I want to get the total, I mean, I know how to do this in other ways. If I want to get the total mass of all the moons of each planet, right? Yeah. So but let, let's suppose let's suppose you start with a flattened out table of the moons, and each has. A planet. Okay, so hold, hold on. First point you're making is this thing is not representable in SQL in a single table. This no. thing is a hierarchical structure, right? Yeah. So let's just look, just for my understanding of how I would get. So if I take, um, it's not that you cannot represent it in SQL. It's just that you need to represent. You have to have foreign relation keys. Explicit, exactly, and then you need to have somehow a way to extract basically this whole tree. Um, with a single query, that that can be done as well. Okay, the, okay. Let's just the structure is well defined in any case. Yes. Right. Okay. So just so for my understanding, I want to get the aggregated mass. So for each planet, I want no, wait, to wait, get. Let's uh, to to get 
on equal footing with what we were doing. First, you need to flatten, and then we need I, to... I don't want to do that first. I want to understand how we do this in a hierarchical structure, and then we'll flatten it and, and go back and see what we would do okay. in the SQL way of doing it. Okay. okay. So if I say all common moons here, all common moons comma mass like that, then that should give me... What is that giving me? That's all planets and the moons there, right? Am I correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, now how do I get, for each of those moons, I want to group by, uh, I want to group by the planet and get the masses of the moons. And the total mass of the moons, how do I do that? And they're already grouped by planets, so. Yeah, fine, okay. Oh, I see, I see. So I'd have to flatten it in order to make it interesting. Yeah. But so if I just want to get, so tell me how to get the total, for each planet, the total mass of its moons. We just need to use total, I guess, as the... Uh, yeah, right. So so then, then the next so, element is total, if I'm not mistaken. But it should be total of uh, a hash of uh, mass, I think. Okay. Although, so what is it? Is it at star hash mass or something? No, it's... Um, well, maybe hash yeah, star. I guess you can you can probably use this. Maybe T, uh, not not hash mass if you're composing. Maybe okay. it's T does, mass. Does somebody yeah. know if this will work? No, that doesn't look right. Okay, so remind me how to do this. So if, if I if all I want to do here is to get the this result, but I only want the masses here. Do I do this? Why isn't that giving me, why is that giving me radius as well? Do you, do you understand the question? You probably need to insert all and then mass. Oh, that's right. That's right. Because for all moons, that's right. That's what I'm doing here. Okay. So then for all moons there, that's right. That's what I need. Right? So, so maybe now you can put total instead of all, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so now here, right, all planets, the moons of those, all those, which just gives a list. So now what I should be able to do there is just say total like that. Boom, we got the result, cool. Yeah. Okay, all right. So now let me understand how to do this in the SQL world where you've told me I first of all have to get the flattened list of all moons. Is that with, correct? Yeah, we annotated with the planets. What do you mean annotated? You mean, you mean with the planets as a column? Yes. Okay. You want to tell me how to do that? Uh, I'm not the data set expert. <laughs> well, so um, uh, it would be useful to see the actual structure of that data set. Like, take a first, like, you one. can see what it is. Look, one. it's it's an association whose outer keys are the planets. Mm -hmm. Then, with each within each planet, there's an association which gives the mass, the radius, and then the list of moons, and so on. That's the structure. Mm -hmm. Um. So, can you um, key, key value map on data sets? You can, but I don't. I, I think that's a very grotesque way to do it. Oh well, oh, the yeah, planets I'm, are only I'm in surprised the surprised you guys are. Uh, okay, well, how do you get the planets out? Otherwise, the planets are only in the keys. I would say you can just say keys of data set. Okay. Planets. Okay, so that that thing has to have the key uh, planets, right? What thing has to have the key planet? No, no, no. The keys are the planets, Carl. No, no, but if you want to flatten it out, now this has to be appended to the, to the moons. Right. Well, let's first get all the moons, like all, all the moons flattened. So that would be, yes, all moons, and then join. Yes, join moons. Um, okay, so this what, will give us... Join instead of all. Yeah, I can do that. Actually, don't I want catenate there? I don't know. What do you think that's giving you? No, that's wrong. So maybe I think it's, it's not it's not easy to do it this way. Uh, and that's why I actually wanted to see the association not with the formatting but just if you take just take key like a ds of one one 
Okay. Can you do normal of this? Okay. Um, well, we probably want DS of five or something. Yes. That's a, that's a thing with, well, actually. Let's do DS of four. That has a respectable number of moons. Okay. Okay. So, so it gives you the planet name. Uh, well, actually, planet name planet is a key, so it was lost, which is what Carlo was mentioned. Uh, yep. Mentioned. Uh, but other than that, you have the uh, um, mass and radius that you are not interested in, and then you have moons. So what you have to do is indeed to do key value map. Or prevent. Or, or um, well, but you have access. You need access to the key. Right. So oh. if you do key value map on this thing, you can insert the name of the planet. Yeah, insert the name of the planet to uh, to this. Uh, uh, okay. To the so the the claim of someone on the live stream is that this is unnecessarily complex because we don't have aggregate by. Do we believe this? Well, it's uh, no. I think that this is unnecessarily complex because you don't have a good way of flattening first. Then, then aggregate by it's not difficult to write the group by. But I, I, I agree with the sentiment that we should have group by. You mean aggregate by? Yeah, we should have aggregate by. But we don't have a way to, you know, basically take the headings and append them as a, as a column. No, because that's usually a grotesque thing to do. I mean, the only reason we're doing that is because SQL is a two-dimensional tables world, mm -hmm. which so, we don't usually have. So yes, for a data set, you usually do aggregation already within these, uh, you know, substructures that have been chosen to represent it in this particular hierarchical way, which is why data set is well suited for that particular operation because you simply map on deeper levels the aggregation functions, as right. you've seen. And if we want to aggregate by, it's much more suited to flat structures. So which is why it's a bit foreign when we start from the uh, data set format. Okay, you know? but so so the thing that is a, the, the challenge here is that basically all the stuff we're getting from SQL um, is uh, um, um, is have is um, is in the form of these flat tables, which are not particularly I mean, they can obviously be converted easily to data sets, but data sets are much richer structures. But okay, let, let's come back to what we were doing over here. Um, and let's see, Carlo so, has a, a yeah, way yeah. of doing this for what it's worth. Okay, let's say data set of this thing. Okay, now we have the planets as a column. Oh, okay. Now we need, we also need to explode the, the, the moons. <laughs> so to speak, yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, I, I get right. it. And we got to move the moons down into this next hierarchical level. Yes. Um, let, let's not let's not take our time to do this right now. Okay. Um, okay, but let's come back to what you were talking about over here, which is so. First thing that is an issue is that we want the convenience of having an entity that just has a simple string name. Um, but I'm concerned about the way that that will actually, if you're dealing with many databases which have overlapping, uh, you know, uh, table, table names and so on, that that will confuse everything. So that suggests even in this case that there has to be some way when you do the entity register to tell it that you either want it to do the kind of base registration or you want it to do some kind of decorated registration. Does that make um, sense? Yeah, and I think, uh, Stephen, that uh, there are uh, approaches uh, already, like in database world, which work for problems like that exactly. And well, they are reminiscent of the fully qualified names. So it's just a matter of having that thing somehow. Uh, yeah, but so the database has an ID. In fact, the database, more than that, it has a symbolic representation, this SQL database object. So there's no reason why we can't just say entity of you know this SQL database object um, you know, for example, arrow, the, the table name or something. For example. Um, yeah, it would be, I mean, 
I guess that if you do that, you get a very bare entity store, which is like the one we have up there with entity store of database spec. I mean, you, you lose all ability of, uh, I mean, really, we should have entity of entity store, arrow table name. Okay. Uh, no, but probably, uh, still, you probably meant during the registration, not during the referring to entities. No, it both things. I mean, the the yeah, okay, look, fine. look. I mean, once you if you register it, okay. If you do an entity register, that is, you know, look. You can okay. Clearly, in our system, you can say, you know, plus equals something or other, right? You can you can well actually that won't work because it's protected. But you know, you could unprotect it and blow everything up. Um, but. Uh, there has to be the possibility, in principle, of registering something which will overwrite country, right? Yeah. So one question I would have here is whether it would not be better to just use string names for registration as aliasing. You know, like you say, no. register this under this name, this database. But this yes, is I, not only yeah. this is not the only thing you want to alias. Huh? You also want to alias column names and properties. Yes, but uh, that's a separate so. that's a separate issue. Yeah, but but, no, but my point is that there are all kinds of things that you want to 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 rename uh, yes. because you don't you don't control them and and you know and 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 use those names that you want basically refer to you know let's say that the database in Spanish I mean you 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 want to maybe use the English name because you don't know Spanish so you you need to be able to do this kind of stuff. Okay, but that, that's happening at the level of the entity store, right? You can map, in, in the entity store, can you map the native uh, property names to your property names? And yes. How does that work? Well, we, so far we can do it for, uh, in our particular implementation. Uh, there is a place in SQL database object where you can indicate that for table names, and there is a place in the first argument of the resulting entity store where it can indicate that for uh, for column names, but we don't have any way to rename the entire entity store, so to speak. Okay. And, and another thing that you want also in uh, you know those boxes that you see when you do entity list. I mean, in most databases, what will happen is that uh, a lot of tables get just incremental ID, and so you will end up by doing query in different tables, and you only see one, two, and three because basically normally in a database, this is how you got primary keys. And so they will all look the same. And, and so you also need like some function that, that, that allows you to format uh, the boxes there. And, and, and we need to take care to map it efficiently. But, but you know, there are all kinds of customization that are... Wait, wait, wait a second, wait a second, wait a second. We, we've got in entity store, you can specify the labels that actually appear here, right? You're yes, I don't know if there's... Carlo, it's, uh, is, this is already implemented or... Um, no, no. You're the... suggesting that there should be some kind of labeling function, which is a programmatic way of going from the raw keys yes. to whatever the label is. Yeah, but no, that, not that... only do the raw keys. I mean, you, 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 the, the key might be relevant for you to give it the information. I mean, in, in, in built-in entities, you, you have this pretty thing where basically you have country and then the string Italy that identify that, but that, that doesn't happen with, with database. They just have the number one. So probably the primary key is irrelevant for you. And, and you want to take out and to, to display some, some information about, you know, for oh, example. Well, in this case, well, you name. mean you want to dive deeper into the actual values? Well, look at, look at this case of the editor. In this case, you have editor first name and editor last name. So my guess is that the label would be string join of the yes. first name, space, and the last name. Yeah, okay. you want so to what you're like saying that. is that the labeling function, that when you specify, when you set up the entity store, the labeling function should be able to uh, reach in and grab values. Right. It's it, in yes. general, I think it's so like is that set up. Is that function. already set up in entity store? Y yes. 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 So, so I there's think already a way, labeling function for it. No, 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 well, actually, the way you do it is that there is a label property, and that label property has a default function. Okay. Default function to compute the value of this property. So if you take the default to function of the label property. property. Yeah, no, wait. So th that label is a sub-property of the property, because property also have labels. So Yes, but this, have, this is the entity label we're talking about here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, wait. No, that's the label to use in displaying the type. 
Yes. So okay, that label we go. there. Yeah. Label for the entity type. Okay. Yeah. So all of these can have a label, and all the labels can have a default function. So we're Are we're sure? covered. Are you that. sure? Yeah. I thought so only values could have default functions. No. Well, properties can have default functions, and sub properties can have default functions. Oh, I see. And label is just a property. Yeah. Okay. It's a so sub property. So you're saying then that the that the default function could reach in and pull out your editor first name last name. Yeah. I, I don't know if the, if the type level property can have a default function. Probably not. But or maybe it can have only a default function because there's no data associated with the whole type. But, okay. All right. Um, fine. But so so that's the question of so okay. So we've got several things here. We've got. When you set up the entity store, when, when you do this particular thing, you're just saying entity store of database inspect, what that's doing is it's using the defaults for all of the, uh, that's just using defaults for all of the, the, the whole you know, sequence of, of looking at schemas, looking at tables, et cetera. It's just using that, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's a lot more stuff you can do with the first argument for entity store. So, for example, imagine that this stuff has. For example, here we have prices, things like that. Okay, but as a practical so matter, language, you want you want units attached to that, so you yeah, yeah. do that in the entity. Store. Okay, so as a practical matter, it would be nice to see for this example what this actual entity register should look like. I mean, it's probably going to have four lines of stuff that map for every one of these things, like editor. It's going to have some kind of mapping about labels, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then my next question is, if I was going to do this. You know, in practice, what I would probably want to do is to take the do database inspect, get out some association here and start editing it to add different things for that mapping. Well, uh, that actually, uh, the interesting thing is that basically when you evaluate entity store around SQL database object, we generate like a, a skeleton version of the first argument of the entity store. So you can edit that. So if you, instead of uh, like just evaluate the entity store in that entity register and you get to see what gets out. What entity store? Okay. So what what's your point here? I mean, I uh, evaluate that. So basically, what, what we so you already have kind of a skeleton structure to fill in. Oh, there. I see. That's nice. You don't need to go rummage into the SQL database object. And by the way, it just came to my mind uh, another idea that rather than editing uh, direct uh, content of this, we might as well support uh, another you know, function or a wrapper that would take this skeleton and only add things that are changed, that have been changed, and it will kind of merge it with this skeleton, you know? Well, wait a minute. This, is a, this is a way of, I mean, in the entity register, one could expect to give a, a list, just like show or something does that for graphics, one could expect to give essentially the updates to those options. Yes, yes, that's what I more or less what I mean. What I mean, and is there a problem in doing that in an entity register? Shouldn't be, I don't know. It should be, uh, I don't know. Maybe we should uh, wait for uh, Tony to decide this kind of stuff. Maybe he has a good reason why not. To yeah, I don't know. but can we like we have like about half an hour left. Can we go back to the yes, main but I, I'm, tr I'm trying to understand. Okay, so the, the first step here is the, as you're calling them, the base type, basic types, right? Yes. So there are things which come directly from the names of tables in the database. Yes. There are things that somehow come from multiple columns. Mm -hmm. So what is this entity ID wrapper? So, so there are two ways of, uh, of, of thinking about this. Either it's completely positional or it's an association. Can be and cannot be a naked association. But, but either way, what's wrong with saying, is, do we have some conflict with saying, you know, whatever it is, the, the entity here, and yes, this could be a fully qualified name here that goes from that database connection object, yeah, okay. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is um, the... That is giving um, the, okay, so this is the database connection object goes to some schema probably. How are the schemas named? No, no, database, wait, no, it's database, SQL database object is the schema. <laughs> okay. Rep okay, yeah. so this is an, a database SQL object of something or other 
arrow or something, I don't know if it's an arrow, to the table name. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I would prefer to have the anti store in the first argument because that is, it is much richer. But yeah, we could okay. do also... well, so, so you're saying, okay, so you're saying the fully qualified form here, but how do you reference the entity store? You're saying the actual entity store? Yeah, the actual object. Why not? I mean, it's not that much bigger than the SQL database object. What, wait a minute. What's the actual entity store which has the database object there? Yeah, so this is not a reference to the entity store. It's the actual entity store. Yes. Okay. I mean, if, if you don't want to register it, that's the only way I see it. What, wait a minute. If you don't register it, then you could just, I see, that's a good reason to actually put the it's entity, entity store, store in there. Yes. Exactly. I think we had that as a plan. Okay, so that's yeah, yeah. the entity store. So now the question is, what is the no, name? You can't no, no, you can't just put the entity store there. Why not? Because the entity store represents multiple tables. Okay, so what do you, what do you think we yeah, need you to do? Yeah, you still need to do arrow table name. Well, arrow type. Yeah, in, arrow in, type. The, in, the, in the nomenclature yeah, yeah, yeah. of the entity yeah. store. Yeah. Sure. Okay. So then... And then either you have a list of positional things, or you have an entity ID that wraps an association of named things. Fine, but but that's, any that's any one of those to. things represent in the entity store. It has um, these names of entities, right? And those are the names that you have to refer to things by here. Yes. And the slightly confusing thing is that the entity store, by the time it's an entity store, why hasn't it resolved all these questions about multiple? Why hasn't it, by this point, by the time it's an entity store, you've already resolved this question? Uh, no, I mean, this question, the question is not whether it's resolved by the entity store. It's what we decide to make it look like. No, no, I understand that. But, <laughs> but that means, but then the question here is, okay, so this is, whatever the name is in the entity store is the name that appears here. Well, no, and, no, 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 wait, wait, wait. Because the entity store... When you construct the entity store, if you go up, the entity store doesn't have any immediate knowledge of the values of the entities that exist. As a matter of fact, you might be connected to a database that does 1,000 transactions per second. And so the entities pop in and out of, ex of existence all the time, so you don't download them. So the names are not in the entity store. They are only in the database. On the entity store, you know what columns correspond to the names. So the names are already values, Stephen, values of, you know, the data that exists in the database. Well, so what you're effectively saying is that the default function, which defines the names in the entity store, is that correct? Yeah, more or less. It's, it's not, default function doesn't seem like the good, thing, the good name to me because default function means, oh, if you don't find the value, then use this. In this case, it's really the names of the properties that home prize the primary name, no, the compose the primary key. So in other words, uh, Stephen, uh, this, the, the name has two parts. There is a meta information which tells which columns we need to know, the names of those columns. And there is the actual information, which means for that particular entities, what are the values for those columns? Let, let, let's take, actually, let's take a simple example. If you think, imagine we are connecting to a database of country, let's say from, uh, from the World Bank, and they decided to index them as ISO codes. So what you know is that the property ISO code is the primary key. And that's the only thing you have in the entity store is primary key goes to list ISO code, close list. Yeah. So you have, you have the reference to the column that make the... No, but listen, 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 look, look. Our entities have the form type, common name, okay? Now, what you're saying is... In an entity store, the name can be programmatically computed from the database, from the connected database, correct? Absolutely, yes. Okay, so that's all I'm saying is that that entity store, if you want that name to be a programmatically computed name, then use a default function for the name in the entity store. Yeah, but and the all default, good. default function is a thing that is defined as, if you can find the value, use the value, otherwise use this default function. In this case, there is only the default function. That's why I'm not happy with default. Well, okay, fine, fine, whatever you want to call it. But I mean, basically, there is something in the entity store set up. That... Okay, so, uh, Stephen, there is one distinction here. This is something we have to decide on, and we are not going to change this or let the users to change this. 
while for default function and other things, it assumes some kind of customizability. I don't understand what you're talking about. The, the, look, what has to happen is you've got in the database, you've got some you know, names that are being given. As you point out, those can be dynamically, the, the actual uh, objects in the database can be dynamically changing. Okay. Yeah, yeah, but what, what okay. So we need a mapping from those names in the database to the names that we use for our entities. That yes, mapping but, but, should be in the specification of the entity store. No, because people cannot edit it. In case they make it a mapping that is not invertible, for example, then you're out of luck. If you're using a like, if the mapping becomes like string take, and you take only the first three characters, then those might not be unique anymore. You cannot. In, Go so back you and did the wrong. So you set it up wrong in the entity store. Do it again. Well, that, that, but you shouldn't. I mean, there's not there's not much that people can do. The only thing you can do is say, well, actually, it it's something that is deeply into the SQL database object it, that you cannot mess with in the entity store. Otherwise, you cannot retrieve data anymore. So it shouldn't be a, like user definable. All right. So what you, your point is that that mapping that name has to be. Uh, has to have one-to-one -one correspondence to the actual, when you type in a name there, it has to be clear what actual thing to go retrieve in the database. Absolutely. And therefore, your point is that that canonical name has to be a an essentially trivial mapping. It has to be a guaranteed invertible mapping to the set of keys that are used in the database. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So what's wrong with the scheme you have it? Why does it need an no, okay, ID so, thing? Because I have two schemes. When it, and and you see that one has advantages and the other like when you start nesting these things, the hierarchical one becomes very quickly unreadable, and so another option is to have entity ID, and then basically flatten it at each time, and so they're all named, they're all flattened. It's easy to read, but it's too verbose for the simple cases. So I the the point of this meeting was like deciding which one we like best. But I have to note also that the second method, uh, the verbosity, can be alleviated by the uh, box by the proper formatting. Yeah, well, entities are formatted, so you don't really see it all the time. But yeah, this is only also happening like for a complex query. I mean, most of the time, table get one primary key and that's it. This is happening either with, with composite keys or complex query. Look, as a practical matter, what's going to happen here is that somebody, you know, given some corporate database, somebody is going to go to a fair amount of trouble to build these mappings. It's going to take some time to build the mappings. The, you know, that's a separate activity from the use of the mappings. And, you know, these kinds of deeply verbose entity specifications, nobody will ever type one of these things. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. But but someone might want to read them because you are saying, oh, which order is this? Oh, it's the order that I did on the fifth of January, and it's the second one. Sure, of the absolutely. But that means that, as you've said multiple times, the label, which has to have a labeling function, which can go in and actually look at values, has to show for the entity some kind of reasonable display that comes from applying the labeling function to the contents to to information in the database from the entity. But it also, but it also means that the second method is preferred because it is more descriptive in terms of what is which which column. It also provides column names. So I would vote for the second method for well, a bunch of reasons. Wh why do we have to choose between these methods? I mean, I don't understand that when you set up the mapping in the entity store. No, that's not that's not a mapping that will let the user set. The, the label, yes. But this is too fundamental. There is too many ways in which you can make it go wrong. And especially once you start building on the fly types with aggregations and stuff like that, then you can't specify it in an empty store because it has to come just from the query. In other words, it's going to be wired in into the entity framework. And it has to be only one way on which we have to decide. Well, and, and, OK, so your point is, if it's coming raw from the database, so I don't even know how you specify that you are going to use multiple columns as the primary key. How is that specified? Well, you Where don't. You read it from the schema. OK. So the schema contains that information. So where do we, where do we represent that information here? Uh, OK. So if you look at uh, uh, 
No, no you don't. You don't have it there. You don't have it there in the box. Uh, it's not in the boxes, yeah. but it's in the yeah. input form of this. In the input form, you can see it, and also you can extract. Okay. So it. if I say the input form of this thing, okay, well, go to the bottom. Go to the bottom. There is a second argument there, which is sort of, yeah. After all these tables descriptions, there is no, this. No, 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 no. It's, no, it's uh, in the first it's argument. Kind of uh, yeah, Look, each uh, one has oh, oh, primary key. Yeah, primary key. Constraint name. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, what on earth is this? So, for example, so, for, for what are we looking at? Let, let's say title author. Well, let's look at publisher here. Yeah, publisher. Okay. So, it's I, publisher I don't know ID. This. Pu it's publisher ID. The primary key is the columns of list publisher ID. So okay. it can be multiple columns in general. But in this case, it's one. Okay, but so this is the thing you are picking up, whatever that specification is for primary key. And what is constraint name? It's if in the database on, uh, someone gave the database 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 database. that constraint. This is possible. Okay. You can so, have multiple constraints on the database. I don't understand. Database. Whatever the primary key is here. You, you need that whole thing or some representation of the whole thing to give the canonical name for the entity. Isn't that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. So why isn't it just whatever this is? Why isn't, why don't you just pull out whatever you have in this database connection object? And that's we don't have all, we don't need all of that, Stephen. We only need the columns. Why? Because, because that's the, the only thing that matters. The constraint is only relevant when you modify the database, really. And we don't need to know that that is that it's modifiable once we have out the the entity. Well, that's not for version one. <laughs> okay, but but we're not designing just for version one. Yeah, no, but sure. the, the, wait, wait, wait. The, the constraint name is only something that uh, it, it, it's happening only some databases. For example, here is none because I don't think that SQLite is given a name for that. But in Postgres, uh, you know, this thing is a primary key and I'm inserting doing this check this is called constraint and must be an must so have a uh, name in some databases and wait not so enough. ricardo you're a bit hard to hear so i'm gonna repeat so for example you can have something that says that the that the that the primary key is an integer and it's positive so if you try to insert something that is negative the database will complain and wait, why is it called constraint name that seems the wrong name because because it's a named function in the database it runs on the database, so. But why is it called constraint name? Because because when it's there, it's just going to be a string. Oh, I see. It's a particular type of constraint, yes. which is just some you know joke by numbers type. You have a particular string, and that's what it does. Exactly. Okay. Okay, but this columns thing. So what is the reason? So if you were going to use an association rather than a list of columns. What would the first element, what would the keys in the association be? These names, publisher ID and the other possible names for the no, keys. Yeah, the, 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 those are the keys, and the, then you have a value for each entity, basically. I see, I see, okay. So it's so, the column so ID. When, when we raise this to the level of the entity store, that is going to be called, say, canonical name goes to entity property, editor, no, sorry, publisher, publisher ID. Right. I don't know whether this entity ID is necessary. I, I think yeah, well, I, I think it is a good idea to to represent the column names here. If there's more than one column that is being used as the primary key, there it seems like a good idea. Now, particularly when you create these composites. I don't know whether the entity ID are, makes well, sense. Well, the reason Let why we Alan have for a second. Hold on. Let's ask yeah. Alan about cases where we are taking external reference type information. What What is the current plan for this structure of external reference? Uh, the current design for that was external ref. Well, external identifier. Yeah. Right? Okay. That I'm was wrong. The yes. All right. Ex okay. External identifier. First argument would be the the name of the the external source. I mean, we just had that as a as a string because for the moment we were thinking it would just be some set of sources that we have 
some canonical representation. Uh, some some of kind of then. protein database ID, you know, protein database. Right. Something or other. Okay. Second, second arg, some the whatever unique identifier, and then possibly an association of other assorted stuff that we might want to pack into the identifier, which could be a name, label, whatever conventions we want to use, or or. But we think we're canonicalizing. Thing. By the time we've got source and identifier, we think that is that is the sufficient to represent the canonical thing. And the rest of it is just decoration. Is that true, or is the is that is that third element also supposed to actually be part of specifying what thing we're talking about? The third element was only additional information that might be useful to pass in in that symbolic form without having all the the data of the the thing. Right. So in this case, the analog of that would be to pass information that gives, for example, labeling information right here mm. in this entity as a as a as a as a by the way associated with the entity am i making sense rather than having to put the labeling externally and have you know yeah this would be a packaging of the entity with its labeling rather than putting the labeling as separate information in the entity store yeah. i mean if the labeling is programmatic and it's a labeling function then that you know fits well into the entity store but if if there is a separate labeling for every entity it's kind of bad to have to give those, I think, to be forced to give those separately rather than packaging them with the entities. Yeah, it makes sense, particularly because then you don't have to compute it separately. You always kind of get it by the definition of uh, the right. entity. But, but the entity itself, does entity itself have a third argument story or not? No. no. So we could, in principle, pack random commentary into the third argument of the entity. I am not in big favor of this. This was one of the big changes we made going from the alpha representation and moving it all to the properties rather than to the entities. You mean the decorative junk? Yes. Well, uh, there is one thing we could do, which would save everything, which means, I mean, if we use entity annotate of label in the first argument of entity, then that's a place where you can put the, the labeling function. Why are you putting it in the first argument? Why is it not? Because, because it's part of the query. So you're no, saying I but I, you're not saying first argument. What you're saying, and by the way, I can't stand the name entity annotate. But didn't we come up with a better name? Well, there is a whole discussion to be had about the names of this because you wanted nouns instead of verbs. But uh, well, these are the working ones. So far. I thought we'd agreed entity selection and things like that. Yeah, yeah, but we haven't made those changes yet. But, okay, uh, fine. But did we come um, up with a better name for entity annotate? Yeah, we we we. We, we had something, but... Um, what I mean, was it? I don't remember. It'd be great if we could remember that, too. Shall I go look? I mean, it just would help me in terms of understanding... But something in the spirit of uh, append, you know, entity append. I don't think it was that, but anyway, okay. So we'll need that. Maybe Dominic knows that. Should be in the notes of class. I can look, yeah. Well, anyway, um, uh, so uh, there, is a, there is another thing that uh, we... Uh, we should discuss, I think. No, but so, hold on a second. So the, the concept here is if you want to put random decorative junk in with the entity, just like you can build up a composite symbolic, you know, operation has been done on this entity thing using things like entity aggregate by, you're suggesting using the um, uh, annotation Symbolic annotation as a way of adding that stuff. Yeah, because because if you have a yeah, symbolic annotation that is capital L label, then that will automatically work. Uh, someone on the live stream is is Draco Ganic is saying uh, entity extend, and I think I seem to remember that was the name we came up with, uh, um, or extension maybe it was. Yes. As, a, as yes, a, that's right. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. Um, oh, somebody else is asking about connectivity with CouchDB. Anybody want to comment on that? Um, is CouchDB SQL? No. So it's no SQL. So it's it's closer to data set. We can't comment on this at this point. Well, because I mean, we have quite separately connectivity to Mongo. That's actually part of eleven three. Yes, so, um, but still, there is no design so far of how to represent entities that are based on no SQL databases. Well, apart from the RDF stuff, but yes, but it's not exactly. More, so the answer is so. the answer is it's complicated, and we have support for dataset. We have support coming for Sparkle. 
We have support coming for, we have support now for MongoDB and we're doing this SQL stuff. So the answer is, uh, the answer is that remains a whole. Yeah, that remains a whole, but maybe it's the whole is not the right shape <laughs> because since uh, since it's no SQL, then it really doesn't have tables and columns, and and so it doesn't quite fit into entities and properties. So maybe data set is a better interface for those kind of databases. Yes, yeah. this is one. This is one thing, and the other is even if we started doing this for entities, trying to approximate that, we'll face a problem that properties would have to have sub-properties and so on and so on to represent this adequately. And the entity store currently doesn't have that. Well, it has sub-properties, but only one level down, not sub Yes, well, that's what I'm saying. And yeah. for, for hierarchical structures, it better have uh, of the type that... Yeah, are... right. So en entity store is a different play from data set, which is a much more general thing that can support arbitrary hierarchy, which is closer to what this CouchDB thing is. Yes. Um, Right. So there, there was another thing that I wanted to discuss, uh, uh, which is, uh, okay, the, the, it's kind of a philosophical question. So suppose you have done a select, so you filtered the entities, and now... Um, Otherwise known as entity selection, is that correct? Yes. yes. So imagine you have done uh, a selection and you're taking all the books that, are, that cost more than $20, uh, and then you have a single entity that is one of these books. Yes. Now, the question is, if the book goes on sale, does that single entity still exist or not? If it stops costing more than $20. Like this whole scheme of putting the query in the first argument would mean that, no, that entity doesn't exist anymore because it's now cheaper. So it's not part of that. It's not picture. part of that selection. Yes. So the reason why we are asking this, Stephen, is that uh, the current uh, one of the questions we are up to is whether we should always put the uh, entire query as a first argument as the type of the entity. And this example is in favor of, yes, we have to do it. Because and this will differentiate between entities which are from the original one and the entities which are from the select one. Yeah, so I mean, this so, can so, happen also for, for regular entities, guys. I mean, if, yeah. if you delete an entity with a primary key, then the entity is not there anymore. And you get yeah, yeah, so the point is, it's a lazy thing. I mean, that is, exactly. you've got the symbolic representation that represents the way you extract the entities that correspond to this type. So the type exactly. is dynamic. Exactly. Yeah. Right? But we, we have a precedent that says no, really. Because if you take, entity, if you take the entity list of the entity class of the G8 countries, and yes. then you evaluate that in a notebook. Three years later, you come back, you open that notebook, and say Italy is kicked out of the G8, and Slovenia so is in. What's that? <laughs> and Slovenia is in. Then what, what happens? I mean, should, should the references to those entities have a memory of the fact that they came out of a query that was an entity class? OK, so the question is, those entities right now uh, only say country. They don't say that we were looking at the G8. Right. As opposed to what you're saying for the, the thing we're talking about now, where you're imagining that everything is lazy. Yes. Even to the so, point so, of the actual entity specification itself. Yes. So actually, this example just shows that entity list, in a sense, is a, a, a wrong thing in this uh, entity framework in that it's too eager and it creates this kind of tension. Well, okay, but so listen, guys, at some point it has to resolve. I mean, you could yeah, have Yeah, but that, be, that point could be entity value. Well, I know, but the, what, what's happening here is that entity list, like entity value, is doing a resolution of some kind. Yes. Right? It's, it's actually basically entity value of the primary keys. Yeah, well, I mean, this seems useful. And I, I think the question of whether one wants a lazy form of entity list is a different thing. Yeah, that's right. Probably for this particular thing, it would be enough if all these entities that you see on the screen would remember the original query they came from so that if something happens later, they could sort of say that, okay, I no longer exist because things changed. I don't believe in that. I, I don't believe in that. that that's, you know, you're going to maintain this whole giant trail of all kinds of weirdness for that. I mean, at some point it has to no, resolve. It's actually, and get an it's actually less, uh, less weirdness. Because the thing is that 
Uh, imagine you're doing something very complicated where the selection is not the outermost operation, but it's deep inside other operations that are more structural. Yes. Well, that you can't just say, okay, we peel off a few of the anti selections if we can, and we peel off sort by an anti class, but not all the other things because they're structural. And then. All right, I mean, so listen, what, what you. In my opinion, if you say, oh, you have a query, you don't anti list. Uh, you have this nice identity that the first argument is was what you passed on to this, and it's very easy to understand. Someone from our live stream is, is saying you have to track all the entities' origins. An interesting claim. The, I mean, but that's so, what we were saying as well. Right. So I mean, the issue here is, you know. Within our own knowledge base, you know, this, this question that you're raising here, namely that the entities that are returned from entity list, this is a result, you know, in other words, uh, and the fact that were you to recompute this at some point in the future, you might get a different result, that's fine. It is not but, the case that everything in the system is lazy enough that were you to compute it. I mean, if I were to say now, for example, then in my notebook, there's the result for now is right there. If I were to open this notebook again, I mean, if I were to say dynamic of now, then it will be a whole different story, right? But if I just say now, then you know, it's evaluated at the time when it's evaluated and, and, and it gets the result it gets. Yes, yeah, but for entities, it's different, Stephen. Well, let's, let's, why? Lazy. Okay, let's let's do kind of a... Okay, so let's forget for a second about entity selection, entity class, and entity sort by. Entity annotate is something that you cannot get the properties entity of. Entity extend. Don't have it. Entity Go extend ahead. is it's something nice. that you cannot do anymore if you, if you don't have the extension in the first argument because you don't know how to compute it. You, you, don't, you lose the property that you have extended, right? Yeah, you don't know what, uh, yes, but, but wait a second. Okay, the issue is, okay, these entities that you're dealing with that are associated with an external database, their existence is tied to whatever the external database says is the case, so to speak. Yes. But right? it's not only this, it's, there is a much simpler problem. If you have a set of books, and then you filter those books by the price, so only give me books which are cheaper than $10, then one and the same book can be in the first set, but it costs $15, so it's not in the second. So the question is, uh, when I'm getting from one and the, sa like the same entity of the same type, one filtered and one not, then one of them exists and, one, and the other one should not. But, but and it's not reflected. But wait, wait a second, Leonid. Before we get into that, like there are a series of operations where we can't get around putting the query in the first argument. Like if you're doing a join across, if you're doing uh, uh, an aggregate by, if you're doing uh, even just an uh, extend, then there is no way to take the properties out unless you put the whole query in the first argument. So there is, there is just a small subset of things that you can peel away if you want. And my question is, do we really want to document a weird algebra of this head, this head, and this other head can be peeled out, but only if they are the outermost. If they're inside, no, because then it changes the whole result. I, I want to come back to the main point. Okay. The main point is that at some moment, you actually resolve from whatever was in the database, you go through and you compute and the answer is 75 or something, right? If you want to find out what that answer is two days later, you recompute it, right? So at some point, everything resolves. And yes, the question but, but, is- but, but entity, a list of entities is not completely resolved because you can still pass it to entity value and get values out. I'm aware. 
you know, as you've said, that list of entities, you might have a different list of entities two days later because some property of some entity changed and so that a selection, an upstream selection when run would give a different result, right? True, yes. But the idea that you're going to maintain everything in, I don't even think it's correct to maintain everything in a lazy form. In other words, I think it's perfectly reasonable to say, if you want to know what this result is today, compute it again. Right? Don't... No, no, that's, that's fine. That's fine, Stephen. But there are some results that you can't possibly retrieve. Like, for example, like if you scroll down and look at the examples for join across, yeah. uh, like those examples are just structurally different. So, so what? And so you need to represent the structure in some way. Otherwise, you don't know how to retrieve them. But what do you mean by retrieve? You mean how to do the actual lookup in okay, the database? Look at, uh, look at, okay, examples. There's one with country and city. So you're joining the, the countries with the cities, and you're joining on the capital. So you're, you're adding, uh, the, you're adding the, 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 the whole capital, uh, the whole, like Rome to Italy. So you can get yes. the population of Rome, you can get the mayor of Rome or whatever. I hate the way databases work. Anyway, never mind SQL <laughs> databases. It's so grotesque. Okay, go on. Yes. So now the, the question is, like, there's no way around putting a join across in the first argument because otherwise the second argument doesn't make sense. We don't, have, we don't even have a name for this joined table. I understand. I understand. And if you go further down, there's a super complex example that has annotations in the middle and then join this gray one. So this one is computing, like it's taking a subset of all the books, then it's taking uh, the authors, it's computing the total income per author of, of each book, oh, no, of each author. So how much money? Look, did let's just with? summarize what you're saying. Okay, the, the basic question is, how much stuff is lazily maintained in the specification of the entity versus how much stuff resolves and one of the conflicts is that even to say what entity you're talking about, you need to maintain a bunch of stuff. Yes. Yes. And there is only so much you can peel. Like in this case, you can peel nothing because there's no outer entity select or entity, sorry, uh, yeah, entity selection or entity class. Okay. Right. So what you're saying is the, as you do a bunch of operations, those operations are maintained in symbolic form. We've agreed about that. I, I'm still confused. When well, the, 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 the idea, I think, is simple. I mean, you need to think about this stuff like entity glass construct. You you just create new types at runtime, and uh, and the only way to maintain those 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 types without creating side effects is that the whole thing is is, is the type. Is considered the type, and, and you put it inside entity, and now you use that to resolve entity value. So it's really um, all, all those counters, all those constructs are entity glass like. You are, you, are, you are effectively generating a new type at each step. And wait, if you wait a minute, the, uh, yeah, okay, you, the, the entity class is different not from creating a new type. type. And sorry, I'll finish. But if you if you start saying this operation is not creating a new type, uh, what is a type, and those kind of stuff, this is a discussion that basically it's never never ends yeah you gotta make and, exceptions for things this is the advantage that it has no exception uh, and 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 it's way simpler we approach can only hear to, half your uh, words ricardo consider each one of the guys who knows what i'm about it's basically uh, you you can try to to, to summarize it carlo um, but, but, yeah, but, but, yeah, yeah, okay, Ricardo, you're very hard to hear. So, yeah, so what Ricardo is saying is that what I was saying before is that, I mean, if you decide, if, if you want to make a call that some things get peeled off, then you, you start getting into. Well, I, I realize, I understand that. It's a slippery slope, and that doesn't seem like the right thing. And by the way, Steven, we already discussed this all, and I think we already kind of agreed on the runtime type. Well, you, not, 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 not all of us. I mean, uh, uh, Tony is still a bit on the fence about this. Yeah, that's right. Well, the fact that Tony isn't here is kind of bad. Yeah. Um, this has been a bit of a frustrating meeting, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I mean, this is a complicated subject. And 
I'm I'm confused. Actually, somebody on the live stream is is saying that they recommend creating a repository and not put everything on the entity level because now entity can do apparently everything. Not quite understanding that. Um, That's not possible with the with the degree of laziness and symbolic nature of entities, unfortunately, because they are too lazy to not know they have to know a bunch about themselves to 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 be as lazy as we want them to be yeah Drago 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 Drago. is pointing out that that um, tables have types and operations on tables create new types and so you need to type algebra which is kind of what we you know that's kind of the, the type of thing we have here now in fact we have a whole different type algebra system that i don't think is closely related to this Unfortunately, I mean the the type algebra that's used in that's being used in things like the compiler and so on. It's a different one, still. Yeah, it's a different one. And I don't think it's it's bad to have several type systems because they always belong to a particular problem they're solving. Yeah, well, well, this is really not a this is a relational algebra, and that one is like, like more a Hindley Miller type of algebra. So, not quite the same structure mathematically. Okay, but but let's just. I'm sorry, I'm just, we need to kind of wrap this up. And I'm, um, you know, the original question that you were asking is deceptively simple relative to the actual story here. Yeah. <laughs> and I think your answer is let's use uh, uh, entity ID and association unless it's a single thing. I don't know whether we need the entity ID wrapper. We, uh, we actually do because of, so since we have implicit entities, the second argument, when the second argument of an entity is a list of rules, it does some very specific thing, but it's not this one. And so, if you we want need to... a wrapper. No, wait, wait. If, yes. if you want to introduce a rule where an association does a different thing, subtly different thing than a list of rules. No, I think that's grotesque. Yeah. So we need a wrapper. Maybe it's not entity ID, but and maybe if you want like to have yeah. a generic ID object, for example, things like create UUID are now returning a string. They, they, they could have been returning some kind of ID that, you know, there's a generic object ID, and so that is not a string, and the ID is actually the expression. Um, and, and for us, the expression would be... I understand, but as soon as we do that, no, that, that's silly, because basically, you know, that's going to turn into just an arbitrary symbolic expression. This... Yeah, we need a very specific one. Yeah. So I don't know whether the name entity ID is right. I don't think it is, but fine. But then the main point here is that these types can be these arbitrarily complicated database operations, basically, referring not to... Only data, not only database, Stephen. This should also uh, work for the in-memory backend as well. So it's a general construct. No, I understand. But at the end of, at the end of this, somewhere, it is referring... How is it referring? Somehow the whole thing has to refer to the connection object. Well, that is implicit with the, with, the, with the registration. But it's, a, we, it's implicit with the registration, which I don't think is necessarily the right thing. Well, if you, if you want, then before title author, before title, before author. Well, I know, you you'd end up having to have some grotesque thing with the connection object. Right? Or as an option, Stephen, that could be registered as a string name that could be referred to. Okay, listen, this is the same thing we're getting in entity function. Entity function is an attempt to take what are effectively string names and make them, make it so that, uh, right? So, I mean, the no, fact it's, that- No, it has much more than that, Stephen. Well, entity I understand, function. but- Yeah. It, it avoids the fact, so the fact that this naked string represents something, I mean, in principle, you could end up with two database connections here that you're referring to in your in your weird join across thing that have uh, names that actually conflict, right? But they are disambiguated yeah, but, by but, coming. But, but, but Stephen, in uh, in entity function, you can actually use an explicit entity value with entity property. No, I, I realize that, but I'm saying that these, these these names, these naked names that you're using here, could might need to be qualified with the database connection that they come from. Yes, or rather with the entity store that they come from. Yeah. 
Okay, but the yeah. entity store, the only representation that we currently have for an entity store is the symbolic entity store itself. Whereas a database connection is an opaque object, the entity store itself is just until it's registered, at which point its types then appear as string names, basically. The entity store itself does not have a uh, an opaque object that represents it. It is just represented by itself as a symbolic thing. Yeah, yeah, but so my point is that in theory, you could have one database connection and construct two completely different entity store around it, changing the names and doing all sorts of weird stuff. And so the right level of, 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 uh, of specification there is the entity store, not the, the database connection, because you can have multiple entity stores per database connection. No, I, I understand, but I'm saying, how do you reference the entity store other than by just giving the whole entity store? Um, you could give it a name when you register, and if it's unregistered, no, then, then there's then, only one way. Yeah, but then, then you're registering the name of the entity store. You've got two levels of registration then. No, but uh, well, the other thing is that it could optionally, and the store could have like an option that says name goes to a string, and then you can. Yes. It no, I understand, it. but then then you could have the situation of two entity stores with the same string name. No, and, and also, uh, well, also the what do you do? It should not be allowed. But you can. Well, so then, entity the register should basically fail if you try and register yes. two entity stores with the same name. Yes, exactly. Well, wait a second, but if you don't register, you do, you don't can't do, can't use that string anyway, right? If you don't register, then the only option is that you use the the entity store itself. Right. So none of these things, none of these names here, like title, would work if you hadn't registered the entity store. Yeah. Yes. There's something wrong with this. I mean, that is that the, I mean, one of the things that's probably wrong is that within an entity store that you get to register multiple uh, types with naked names like this. Um why do you consider this wrong? Well, because I think what's confusing about it is that somehow, you know, you're saying, well, use a single string to represent the entity store because it's easier to, to notice that you have two entity stores with the same name than that some particular random type inside one entity store yes. conflicts with some random type inside another entity store. Yes. Right? That's... Um, I mean, it makes one think that the, a better scheme would just be to say, okay, great, we can give a name to an entity store, and then the more qualified name for the type is entity store name arrow type name. Yes, exactly. But in a simple case, I think it would be still useful to allow people to use a single string. No, I agree. This is nice. It looks nice to have a single string. It also allows one to use the kind of hash notation for... Um, you know, to, to use that, to pull that out of an association. By the way, this use of underscores and databases, I mean, it might be useful for us to end up with some convention for dealing with uh, even some bizarre syntactic thing where, where if you do a hash, because clearly we can't support those underscores as such in our syntactic system with, you know, hash in front of the whole thing. But we, uh, so far we don't support hash in front of the whole thing. And, no, I understand uh, that. Not with underscores in it. No, but I mean, it also, like, I, I think I, I told you this already. If you want to, no, like in entity function, like hash is documented to be just for association. And if you wanted to use it for entity value. No, no you couldn't use it for entity function. It has a very definite meaning. It's, it's, it's hash, you know, open bracket name. That's what hash name means. Right, that's that's it's precisely equivalent to that. Well, you'll have to walk over Itai's dead body to get that through, but uh, because it's 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 really not function application there. It's it's or association extraction. It's really entity value. And in, in this case time, here, no, I know, I know. So the, okay, all right, let, let's not cross that particular bridge right now. Yeah. Okay, we we are really out of time. Um, this has been a slightly frustrating meeting. Uh, for those, as I say, on the live stream, this is more technically complicated. Um, and I mean, I'm, I'm still a little bit unclear what, I mean, yeah, we, we really need to go through again. Okay. 
it appears to be the case that there is no choice but to build up these sort of lazy symbolic objects as the kind of composite pop-up entity types. Right? That appears yes. to be what we have to do. Yes. Um, the details of exactly how that works, I, I mean, I would like to understand more how these operations work. I'd also like to get a more realistic, a few more realistic examples of what the mapping tables look like effectively. In other words, take some real database, I don't know, a bugs database or something, and actually try and write what this, um, uh, you know, what the realistic sort of convenience. So you, you want labels and uh, and maybe even add new quantities and stuff like that. I think so. I mean, let's see what it looks like and see see what this, I mean, basically what we're dealing with is what this structure looks like for a realistic database, right? Well, actually, and, the, this database we are showing here is quite realistic except for being small. Fine, fine. I understand it's realistic, but you haven't decorated it here. Yes, right. I mean, you haven't got um, realistic label names and things like that. I'd like to see what that actually looks like. And then, you know, the question really is, from a management point of view, you know, in a typical corporate setting, there'll be a bunch of random corporate databases. These mapping tables want to be also stored centrally somewhere. So what is our plan for doing that? Do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, it's not going to be in some one sort of pop-up notebook that these appear most yeah. of the time. So most one of the time... It will be, this is the database we're connecting to, and we always want to connect with this mapping table effect. So here is here is the idea, Stephen. When you do entity register, one of the ways is, remember we were discussing that they could, could in principle take a second argument that would be the mapping, that would be the decoration. And okay. that could also be a file pointing to a certain file where that thing is, you know, really uh, located. Okay, but, but but realistically, we need to think through what this actually looks like. So, you know, take our company, for example, with whatever it is, thousands of random databases around the company, right? Each one has, like, the pointer of the database, some authentication information, and this mapping table that anybody who's going to use it for more than language is going to need, right? That mapping table is presumably made by, you know, DBAs, effectively, or something like that, Um one would hope it's made by DBAs. Um, that that um, uh, and the question is, where is that, and what does the thing look like when you make this connection? Is it something where it's proxying some through how through the cloud? That there is some cloud object that contains all that connection information together with the, this table, or what? Yeah, it needs thing? a separate. It needs a separate discussion, I think. Right, but I mean, uh, then the question is. You know, what would be convenient, like in our corporate setting, is just like we have, uh, you know, the data repository, it would be useful to have, and maybe it's even, you know, we, we have, uh, you know, a private data repository within the company, and uh, which contains data of use within the company. And a question is, is it that data repository? Is it, is it a private data repository like that, that contains the references, you know, in resource data like things? contains these accessible databases together with all their mapping tables, or is there some separate repository that contains that information? Am I making sense? Well, we, we've already put some entity stores, the memory entity stores in the, in the data repository. That's right. So, so that's right. I, mean, I, I don't see why we couldn't have like some sort of curated entity store, well, in the data repository that doesn't actually contain data, but it contains the connection to an external SQL. Well, I agree. I don't, uh, yeah, maybe that's right. Not, but so. let's walk through that. I mean, let's try to build what the data repository entry, if it is the data repository, for example, for the bugs database, let's try and build, you know, just so we're clear what, um, you know, what the goal would be. I mean, if we take, you know, a typical, oh gosh, these things are, um, if we take, um, I really am late for something else, but, but, um, uh, that's not what I'm looking for. Let's see, data repository. Um, okay, so if I go to the data repository, this is just the external data repository, and I go to, I don't know, I think we have one here, for example. Um, uh, where's a good example here? Um, yeah, this one, I think. Oh, that's a database there. But I think there's also an entity store of that. 
Um, maybe we should have entity store, okay. All right, so here we go. So this is an entity store, right? So the question is, can I get it so that, and that is totally grotesque and should be replaced by a, a entity register. Does that, that, that should, by Got the way, it. that's a separate issue. Yeah, go ahead, Alan, yeah. No, 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 just, just saying, yes, I see that. Right. The, um, so my question then is, you know, what I'd like to see is a page like this that says this is how to connect to the bugs database as a um, as an entity store, and then you know with somehow the back end of this being all of this mapping table and so on, right? Does that make sense to people? Yeah, yeah. Except that uh, we also have to decide to what extent we really want to always save the uh, schema because uh, depending on whether the database itself. Uh, is uh, like, you know, read-only or not, we might actually want to either store the schema or say that it has to be inspected every time to be... You I know, don't know, but, up but to if you. The schema changes, if, if you, the schema changes, even the, the first argument that you store it will have to change. Yeah, right. that's true. Like okay, so, so figure that out. But the end result should be, we need something that looks like this, which is both for our, you know, sort of personal internal purposes and for everybody else to be able to have their corporate databases to be you know, visible in a nice clean way like this so you can go browse them and go find one and go see how to do the connection. Make sense? Yeah. All right, we should wrap up for right now um, and uh, hope for a simpler meeting next time. Um, and uh, okay. Well, see aren't you at least uh, happy that things were working in prototype? Yeah, actually, I didn't even notice that. Right, the fact that the the fact that the computations were actually working is a very good sign. Um, <laughs> and uh, uh, yes, that is good. Thank you for pointing out that that uptick fact. Um, and thanks to people on the live stream who had all sorts of sophisticated things to say, and we appreciate that. Uh, for those who are interested, later on this afternoon we are doing a meeting on a completely different topic about geometry, um, and uh, invite you all. Or anybody who's interested to join that. Okay, thanks all. See you later. Bye -bye. See you. Bye. See you. Bye bye.